This is a seven minutes uh, summary of our class in Old Testament one on Monday, April 19, or April 20, I guess it's 20 April. Uh, Amazon set a seven minute timer. Seven minutes, starting now. So what we're gonna do is just um, walk through what the Bible sh explains about clean and unclean. This is something which is really important to understand and it's something which was very much a part of Jesus's ministry. So the outline of Leviticus is about sacrifices, about the priests, about clean and unclean animals, cleanness and uncleanness in birth, cleanness and uncleanness as an ancient disease, cleanness and uncleanness in personal health, cleansing the temple, day of atonement, blood and sacrifice, cleanness and uncleanness and sexual activity, and then laws about many different things, and then finally laws about priests, sacrifices, festivals, and values of items. And look at all of these verses are all about clean and unclean. So clean and unclean is a really important part of the book of Leviticus, therefore it's a very important part of the Torah. So let's just define uncleanness and cleanness and holiness. Cleanness. Humanity in the world before Adam and Eve sinned were good. In other words, they were clean. So what we're doing here is that good and clean are the same thing. So God declared all things to be good. Everything is clean. Uncleanness. That means humanity is unable to fellowship with God because they are no longer good. They're covered with sin. So in this definition, uncleanness is not being good. The earth is also unclean because it's undergone terrible suffering and decay because God subjected it to futility because of Adam and Eve's sin. Now, holiness is different, very different from cleanness and uncleanness. Holiness has to do with belonging to God. God infinitely and utterly himself belongs to himself. And he is holy in and of himself. Humans, they are holy when they belong in every part of themselves to God. Um, things can also belong to God. So when you think of holiness, think of God's possession. When you think of cleanness, think of goodness. When you think of uncleanness, thing of something that's not good and defiled by sin. So when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, they changed. Their eyes became corrupted and they saw the world with Satan's eyes. And when they saw the world with Satan's eyes, that meant that they filled the world with Satan's works. So the whole concept of um, Adam and Eve's fall and the knowledge of good and evil is all about how they see. And they don't any longer see with God's eyes. They don't longer see with human eyes. They see with Satan's eyes. And they see the world through that dark, dark vision. And they can't see things normally. The way creation was made, God said, let us make man in our image. And to be made in God's image means to rule as God's rulers. He, of course, is the ultimate infinite king, but humans have been made under him. And so the way the world goes, that there's God, humanity, and then the animals, earth, and the plants. The animals, earth, and the plants are under humanity, and humanity is under God. Unfortunately, when humans ate the fruit, they tried to put themselves over God. When they did that, all of creation was set out of order and was cursed. The world is still under the authority of humanity, but is filled with death, suffering, pain, and uncleanness. Sickness comes because of Adam's sin. It's a symptom of death. And it's important to recognize this. There was no sin sickness before Adam and Eve ate the fruit. Sickness comes as a part of this corruption 
that is coming into the world. Adam's Animals killing other animals because of Adam's sin. That's a symptom of death. Difficulties in raising crops come because of Adam's sin. That's a symptom of death. Pain in childbirth comes because of Adam's sin. That's a symptom of death. No animals have pain in childbirth. Humans have pain in childbirth, but animals do suffer. The only reason there's suffering in the animal kingdom is because of sin. The world is cursed because of Adam and Eve's sin. That's what does that. The world is therefore not good. It is corrupted. Why is it corrupted? Because of Adam and Eve's sin. So what we need to do is try to understand now um, what does that mean as far as all of the laws go? Well, the laws are taking a particular part of human existence. All of human existence is unclean because of sin. All of human existence is unclean. Our relationships are unclean. Our thoughts are unclean. Our desires are unclean. Our actions are unclean. Our very beings are unclean. We are unclean because of Adam and Eve's sin, and we're unclean because of our own sin, and we're unclean because of our parents' sin, and we're unclean because of our society's sin. All of those things make us totally, completely unclean. But what God did in his Hebrew religion is he decided that he would have certain things to be unclean, and those are symbolic for all of our uncleanness. Leprosy is symbolic of all of, all sickness is a, is a, picture of our uncleanness. All sickness is, is an experience of dying, but he chose leprosy to be specifically. Same thing with animals. Animals all are suffering. Animals all are on, they're not right. They're all corrupt. They're all dying. They're all suffering because of human sin. He chose certain animals to be symbolic of all of the animals and all of the suffering and all of that's, that's wrong in the animal kingdom. So what we have then, so our time is up. What we have then is clean and unclean is symbolic of the fact that all of us is unclean. Every single, every single millimeter of our body, every single millimeter of our mind, every single millisecond of our existence is unclean. And so what God does is he takes certain things symbolically to be unclean. And by the way, they're usually cleansed by sacrifice. So the clean and unclean then becomes a picture of what is going to happen in Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ comes to make us clean. Well, I've run out of time. And so we'll just have to talk about this again on Wednesday. Have a great day. And God's blessings.